Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make another Photoshop texture. This time we're going to be creating water and water patterns. You can use this for so many different applications. In my examples I used it for a branding application, a day spa, and also for a summer sale. So in this tutorial we're going to be doing two different textures. So this one is just going to be a little bit different. It's going to have kind of like a swooshy type thing going on so that you get that nice flowy action there. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a new document. I'm going to go to File, New. I'm actually going to start with uh, something really small. We're going to go with 1000 by 1000 pixels. I'm going to change this to 300 resolution. We're going to be working RGB 8-bit and I'm going to go ahead and click Create. From here I'm just going to unlock my background, right click and convert this to a smart object. From here we're going to go straight into adding the filters. Make sure that your foreground and background color are on default, uh, black and white. You can click on the little icon to get you there. And then we're going to come into the filters and we're going to go to render and, oops, render and clouds. Now we're going to come back into filter. This time we're going into render difference clouds. And we're going to do this a few times. So I'm going to just use this last filter used. So it's going to be this one, difference clouds. Again, we'll do difference clouds. We're going to do it as many times as we need to to get less of this veining and more of just like a, a random look. So something like this will be okay. Let's try it one more time. Okay, this is a little bit better. So we're going to go with this. So I did that several times here. So the good thing about having this as a smart object is you can see your progression right here and kind of go back. I know for myself, I do a lot of experimentation with filters and, and those types of things. Having the smart object helps me kind of go back and tweak things, but also it helps me figure out how I did something because sometimes you'll do something and you don't even know how you got there. So this is going to be a big help when you're experimenting with your textures and patterns. So anyhow, now that we have something that we're happy with, I'm going to come back into filter and I'm going to go to filter gallery. These are the two filters that we're using. These are the last ones I used. So I did this before the video, so they're already here. Uh, but the first one we're going to start with is this one, Chrome. Chrome you can find here in the sketch folder. So I'm going to go ahead and close these so you can see where we're at here. So these are all the folders and we're going to come here to sketch and then choose Chrome. And for our settings, our detail is zero and smoothness is 10. All right, the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the little eyeball on for plastic wrap. If you don't have another one here, you'll just come down here to the plus sign to add a new effect. Uh, but we already have this here, so I'm gonna go ahead and close these up again so you can see where we're at with the plastic wrap. So we're gonna come in here to artistic and then it's going to be this one right here on the third row down. Our settings for this are going to be highlight strength of, actually I'll, I'm going to bring this down to about nine and our detail I'll actually bring up to about nine as well and we'll go ahead and leave our smoothness at 11 and I'm going to click OK. So this is what we've got right now. It does not look like water yet. You're going to get that effect with our gradients. So we're going to go ahead and make some gradients right now. I'm going to come here to the adjustment layers and I'm going to choose gradient. Then I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to grab this one. It's the foreground to background. And then I'm going to come here to the stops. I'm going to click on this first one, click on color. That's going to bring up the color picker. For our first color, I'm going to use 57A CCC. Go ahead and click OK. Everything is going to be basic here. Style, linear, angle 90 degrees, scale 100, align with layers. So that's all good. All right, next we're going to come here to the other side. Click on that one. Click on the color. We're going to bring the color picker up for this stop right here. And the color that we're going to use for that is going to be 668 ABA. I'll go ahead and leave a download link for these gradients in the description as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that. 
All right, so that's pretty much it. You want this at zero, this one at location 100. You can see that right here. I'm gonna click OK. Now with this gradient selected, I'm gonna come here to the layer mode and I'm gonna choose linear light. I decided to add an aqua blue gradient so that you can have two options, one that's like a greener color and then another one maybe like a swimming pool blue color that we did in the first one. So you can just use the, the same method that we just did and I'll have the hex codes for the colors that I use down in the description and I'll leave them up here on the screen as well. Okay, so with this one we're not going to use, I just wanted to give you those colors. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, I'm going to actually turn that one off too, and I'm going to right click and rasterize this. I want to turn this into a repeating pattern, so I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and Offset. Our document is 1000 pixels, so we're going to cut it in half, 500 horizontal, 500 vertical, wrap around, and click OK. So you can see that we have these lines here. Let me zoom in. Okay, for this one we're going to do something a little bit different than what I usually do. I usually use the clone stamp tool, but we're going to try the healing brush tool for this. I have my brush set at 0% hardness, 0 spacing. It's just a regular soft round brush. And this works somewhat like the pattern stamp tool. You'll have to press the option or alt key to get a selection or a source you know, that you can sample from. And then just kind of come in here and draw that in. And just like with the clone stamp, you have to be careful to stay away from the edges. Use the soft brush so you don't get a lot of hard edges here. And just kind of be careful when you're painting that you don't repeat the pattern too obviously. This is an easy pattern to do this with, but it's pretty much the same, just a different option. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Let's go back over here and offset it again just to make sure. Try not to go too far toward the edge because then you'll just get those small um, creases again in the corners. I'll zoom in closer here. Okay, once you're happy with the pattern that you've created, go ahead and come up to Edit, Define Pattern, and click OK. Now the reason that I'm not making it with the gradient on top is because we have this transition here between the colors and it's just going to make it that much harder. So I just went ahead and made it just this right here and then we'll go ahead and add the gradient later on. So now I'm going to come here to File New. This time I'm going to make a bigger document. So I'm going 3600 by 3600 and I'll uh, change our resolution to 300. I'm still in RGB mode. I'm still in 8-bit and I'm going to go ahead and click create. I'm going to unlock this, double click right here and I'm going to add the pattern that we just created. So this one right here. Now it's really big right now. It's at 833%. So I'm going to bring that down to 200. And now I'm going to come here and I'm going to go to the gradients and I'm going to choose the gradient that we just created. So this one right here. And again, I will leave links to these down in the description. I'm going to click OK. OK again. And then just add this linear light. I can see right here that I didn't quite get this the way I should have. So I can go back and fix those and recreate this. But this is just, you know, for demonstration. So I'm not going to worry about this being perfect. And besides that, this is not even going to show up because we're going to add another step to this. What I'm going to do now is right click and rasterize this layer uh, because it was just a blank layer with a pattern overlay on it. We're turning this into the actual pattern and now I'm going to come back up here to filter and we're going to use, where are you? distort and wave for this. So our number of generators is going to be five. Our wavelength is 116, max 120. Amplitude is five, max is, uh, minimum is five, maximum 35. Scale 100 and 100 for horizontal and vertical. And then we have wraparound selected here and our type is sign and I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that's going to give us this wave style pattern. When you zoom into this, so I'm at 50% right here, this is 66% uh, 6 
and this is 100%. So you can see that you have these little waves in here. I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to turn this into a pattern as well. So I'm going to go to edit, define pattern, and then just click OK. Of course you would name it and do all of that stuff, but this is just a demonstration. So uh, I'm just going to keep going. And I like this because you get these little bubbles here in between and then you kind of get this wave look. So when we applied it to a letter, so right here, so, you know, on a bigger piece, it looks more like tile than it does like water. But on a smaller piece like this, it really does give the effect of water. So let me zoom in here um, so you can see this. You can see kind of like a bubbling right here and then, you know, where the water is flowing and everything. And I just love the way this looks inside of um, typography, especially fonts and lettering. It looks really nice. For the first one that we created, you have um, this style and I use that same style, you know, right here on this one as well. So that'll just give you kind of an idea of how you can use these patterns. If you're interested in making your own Photoshop textures and patterns from scratch inside of Photoshop using the filters that you have available to you here, I do have an entire playlist. So make sure to check that out. And if you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.